We all know that support material sucks, but sometimes you've just got to use it. Whether your design has certain geometries that need to be supported, or you want to print something in a certain orientation for aesthetic reasons that requires support material, you've just got to suck it up and use it. But did you know that different kinds of support material will leave different effects on your print? And there's a secret support type that's not a default anywhere that I use all the time to make prints like this succeed every time, and the removal of them is as satisfying as this. How's it going guys, Angus here from Makers Muse and welcome back to another 3D Printing 101. Yes, I look different, the room looks different, I had to re-record this tutorial because the audio was garbage. So I do care a lot about you guys and I wanted to bring this tutorial to you so it helps you make more successful prints. Now, I don't have a problem with default support structures in general. Most models, I just fire default supports automatically generated and they work fine. But for models like this that are very large and tall, that have these thin overhanging sections that just form in thin air, like, you know, these very, this is only three millimeters thick, the default support structures are usually not sufficient. Let me just demonstrate why by generating organic supports out of Prusa Slicer using default settings. Organic supports, which are similar to tree supports in other slices, are incredible, and I do use them a lot for a lot of my prints. But for things like this, where the model is being formed very, very high up, and the support structures have to go very, very high to meet that model, I find that organic or tree supports are usually insufficient and usually very unreliable. This is because this branching effect is very efficient with material use, but it means that there's only a small contact point for that support structure that's being formed all the way up to meet the model. And you want the best supportive bed possible for this print as it gets to this area, because you don't want it to fail or have print surface artifacts. But I find that as these support structures get to the top and they branch out, branch out, branch out, there's a lot of room for error and a lot of room for these print artifacts to creep in and the print to possibly fail. And well, time is money and having to reprint something because it fails some of the time is just not acceptable. So what do you do instead? This is that same model done with default snug supports at a 45 degree overhang threshold. And yeah, it's messy. You can see that these support structures meet the edge of the print cleanly and will support it, but look at these columns. There are these standalone tiny columns of support material rising up from the print bed, like all the way up to support areas of the print. There is no way they will not deviate and most likely fail before they get to the top and support the print. But the print does need support. But not only that, if you look at some other areas of the snug support, you can see that it's printed in this kind of spring-like pattern where this sparse infill style structure is actually going to be, well, very easy to remove and very efficient with material use, but it's gonna be quite su uh, susceptible to deviating and compressing and rotating and moving. You can see that once the support structure does get up to this, this interface layer of dense support shown in dark green, that it will start to become more rigid and more supportive and support the model quite uh, correctly. But to get to that point, there's a lot of room for error and deviation that might affect your print. And also I find with support structures like this, because it's so squishy and, and weak, it breaks away before that interface layer does. So you have to usually have to get in with pliers to pull that interface layer away, which can mar and damage your print. So how do we make support structures that are more suitable for models like this, where you need to support something way up the model and make sure that it doesn't deviate at all, but you can remove the support structures easily. Well, we go back in and change our pattern from rectilinear, which is that sort of sparse, springy-like infill pattern, to rectilinear grid. What this is gonna do is every second layer alternate that pattern 90 degrees in rotation. And that creates a grid-like structure. And boy, does it improve the strength of the support material. So here we have snug supports, and the only thing I've changed is rectilinear to rectilinear grid. And what that means is that these columns are going to be so much stronger. You can see that grid pattern there as the prints, as the, the support structures are formed up to that dense interface layer to support the part. And these, these large columns, you can just rip them off, or in some cases, whack them with a hammer and they just pull away from the print. 
without leaving any surface defects and it is really, really quick to do to save you post-processing time. But we're not there yet because these default automatically generated support structures aren't gonna cut it. You can see we've still got these floating areas that just are too thin and too small. But also I often find that a underside sharp angle usually needs support to creep up a little bit higher than the model itself even if strictly overhangs aren't very severe there, to just give that area of the print a little bit more purchase on that support material to hold it in place just a little bit better so your prints will succeed every time. And to do that, well, we have to go and do some manual support painting. So here on the left-hand side under paint on supports, what I like to do first is highlight the overhangs to show me where areas will need support material the most. So I'll do that by highlighting it to you know about 45 degrees and you see on the model these areas in blue there they are overhanging at 45 or more and they will need support to succeed but by experience i know that this isn't going to solve all our problems because as this print is formed there are some key areas that are doomed to fail without very supportive support structures here here and here so these areas are very thin, they come to sharp edges, and they are over nothing. So they need a very supportive column or structure to form, so when they start being created on the 3D printer, they're rock solid and the print can be created around it without any issues. So how do you make sure that's done with paint on supports? Well, again, I highlight the overhangs, and I'll choose Smart Fill, on overhangs only. So I'll start by painting in the highlighted areas. So for example, down here at the bottom, click that. And up here, click that. And this area here, I'm actually going to increase the highlight overhang just a bit. And then click there, make sure that's supported. And then at this top here, let's go with that as well. This bottom area is interesting. It says it needs support material, but in my experience, it doesn't need as much as you might think because it's a very large area. And if I support it just enough here on the edge, it actually probably will be all right. And also the reason this is printed in this orientation is to get better surface finish on the outside anyway. So I'm actually not gonna worry too much about here. I'll just put support material here. Now that's a good start, but it's not enough. But what we're gonna have to do now is go in and paint on support to form a supportive sort of cupping of these very thin edges to make sure they definitely don't deviate and fail. So I'm gonna go and go to brush, circle, make it fairly large like so, and untick on overhangs only. And then what I like to do is just paint it in like this. So it forms this lip around where the support material probably needs to be. Now, the point is the most susceptible, so I'll probably only do it down to like there. And again, this point up here where the, where the, the overhang lip is, Paint it in there, like so. And this area here, I'm gonna paint it in there too, like that. This area is fine, this area maybe a little bit, but what I'm making sure I'm doing is that these areas of support material aren't too small. Because if they're tiny, they're gonna be very thin columns and they'll fail. And what's a little bit of extra time and print material worth when the print is succeeding every time versus failing 50% of the time. And there we go, I'm very happy with that. You can see where I've told the software to port support material, and there are areas that are large enough that I know the columns will be quite strong and resilient. And here we go. So it looks very similar at first glance to the auto-generated support material, but if you look uh, at a different angle, you can see it's actually not a huge amount of support material. And remember, even though that these grid support structures are a lot stronger than the just standard rectilinear infill for the support, there's still not a huge amount of material. And again, what we're looking for here is reliability in printing these models, not saving a few bucks of filament and time. So scroll through the layers like this, you can see that these columns form. And what they do really well is they hold and support the model as it forms. So it goes up like this. And you can see those areas I've drawn on extra support material to kind of just cup that print as it forms to make sure that if it gets any higher and it might maybe have a small nozzle collision, or the model might want to warp slightly, it is rock solid held in place by those support structures all the way to the top. But I know because those support structures have a good dense interface layer and they're quite resilient, 
I can rip them off the model or hit them with a hammer and they will remove cleanly every time. So we're pretty close to the perfect settings for printing these very large thin walled models. But there's one extra thing I recommend and that is to print with a brim. Because you can see on those first few layers, the model is so thin, it doesn't have much contact area with the print bed. And you want as much contact area as possible to ensure the print will succeed and not come loose a couple of hours into the model printing. So we're gonna turn brim on, go to skirt and brim, and then I'm gonna turn on outer brim, that's fine. And I like to make it quite large. I'll be honest, you just peel it away, it's a single layer. So I'd like to go like eight millimeters, and often I'll actually just say zero separation gap. And the reason I change this is because I've found with these modern printers that have very accurate first layers, sometimes there's not much squish in that first layer, and that separation gap can actually mean that there's a, diff there's a physical separation between the brim and the print itself. So the brim just does nothing. So making it zero means they're definitely gonna touch, but again, it's a single layer, it will just peel away, and worst case, Stanley Knife will clean up the model in a couple of seconds. And that's the finished model. So you can see as we scroll down, it's got those decent support structures and that nice big brim holding that print in place. And I found that these support structures and this style of printing actually works with more than just PLA. I've printed ABS in this. In fact, the pink model that I showed you, that's ABS printed using these support structures, but I used Bamboo Slicer and the X1 Carbon to do that. So let me just show you a very quick tutorial on how to do these settings in Bamboo Slicer, which is essentially Prusa Slicer, just made suitable for the Bamboo 3D printers. So creating these ultra strong snug supports in Bamboo Slicer is much the same as doing it in Prusa Slicer because I mean, it's based off it, but let me show you how I do it nonetheless. Under support structures, you wanna select normal manual because we're not auto generating any supports here and style is snug. And then you can see down here, I've changed the base pattern to rectilinear grid. But before we do anything, we do need to paint in where our support structures will be under the support painting option. And again, you'll highlight, highlight on overhangs only. And then let's uh, change the highlight overhangs option to show you where we might need those support structures. And then I'll choose fill to do a preliminary fill of those support structures like so. And from here, I'll do the same thing where I'll paint on support structures just around those sharp edges that need a, as much support as possible to form correctly. Like here, this is a sharp edge like that. Looks pretty good. And then got one there. Making sure that none of the areas are too small or the columns will be once again too small to print correctly. And that looks quite good to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and slice that and have a look. And here you see you have those columns which are gonna be really strong and print really reliably, supporting this very thin walled model as it forms. Especially this bottom area here, you can see as the print forms, that support structure with a dense uh, interface layer is perfectly holding that print. And there's additional area of painted on to make sure that the print is almost like hugged and supported even better as it starts to form up higher and higher. And we do have a nice brim there ready to go. And this is how you create the strongest, most reliable support structures that I know of within Bamboo Studio. But be warned, these supports are not for everything because as you can imagine, they are incredibly strong. And if the print requires a support structure to be internal or start on the model and form inside parts of the model, you will not be able to remove it at all. It should only be used to hold things in space that are very tall and other support structures would otherwise fail or be unreliable. Do not use these for your everyday support setting. It's gonna cause all sorts of pain and you won't be able to remove it from your models. It's only really good for these very large thin walled prints like helmets for cosplay and that kind of thing. And I find that it is incredibly reliable. And when other support structures fail, I turn to this one.
Thanks so much for watching, guys. Hope you found this video useful. And if you did, maybe just consider subscribing to Makers Muse, where it's my aim to empower your creativity through technology. Catch you later, guys. Bye.